Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, dear students. This is the fourth lecture. In this lecture, we will be discussing Carnatic Wars and how it resulted the establishment of the British superiority in India. Starting with the First Carnatic War. The First Carnatic War was from 1746 to 1748. In most of the conflicts in Europe, Britain and France ranged on opposite sides. For example, Austrian Succession War or the Seven Years War. In all these conflicts, Britain and France ranged on opposite sides in Europe. The first and the second Carnatic Wars were the reflection of this Anglo-French conflict in Europe. India was one of the theatres of these wars. The first Carnatic War broke out in India with the Austrian War of Succession in Europe. In Austrian War of Succession, Britain and France ranged on opposite side, following which in India as well, both these powers ranged on opposite side and engaged in wars. At the time of the First Carnatic War, the headquarters of the French settlement was at Pondicherry. Pondicherry was the headquarters of the French settlement in India. They had also subordinate factories at Masuli Patanam, Karikal, Mahi, Suraj and Chandranagar. These were the prominent subordinate factories which were the major English settlements during the period of the Carnatic War as far as English was concerned. The English settlements were at Madras in South India, Bombay in Western India and Calcutta in Eastern India. They had also subordinate factories in different parts of the country in addition to these three main establishments in Madras, Bombay and Calcutta. Even though Austrian War of Succession broke out in Europe, both French and British authorities at home directed the authorities in India not to engage in hostilities with each other. But despite these instructions, hostilities broke out in India between French and English in 1746. English was the offensive. English Navy under Barnett captured some French ships. It with this first Carnatic War commenced. Duplay was the French Governor General of Pondicherry. He had been holding this post since 1741, since his appointment. 
Duple, the French Governor General at Pondicherry sent an urgent appeal to Labardonios, the French Governor of Mauritius, for an military help to fight against the British force. On getting this appeal from Duple for military help, Labardonios reached with a powerful army of 3,000 soldiers on the way he used to defeat French forces. Once Labardonios reached Madras, he started besieging Madras both by land and sea. Labardonios with a powerful army of 3,000 soldiers began to besiege the English settlement at Madras. On 21st September 1746, Labardonios was able to capture Madras. Robert Clive was also one of the prisoners arrested by the French from Madras. Later he masterminded Battle of Plassey. Robert Clive later masterminded the Battle of Plassey. Once Labardonius got Madras, he decided to ransom Madras to the English against cash payment. But Duple was against this plan. He was not ready to give back Madras to the English on cash payment. But later, Labardonius was handsomely bribed by the English and they got back Madras to them. The English got back Madras. 4 lakh British pounds was the ransom. After getting ransom from the British and returning Madras back to the English, Labardonios returned to Mauritius. Once Labardonios returned to Mauritius, Duple disagreed the returning of Madras by Labardonios to the English and Duple was able to recapture Madras. Again, for the second time Madras was captured by the French. First, it was under the leadership of Labardonios and the second time it was captured by French Governor General Duple. After the capture of Madras, Duple turned his attention to capture Fort St. David. It was a small English factory south of Pondicherry. But Duple did not succeed in capturing Fort St. David. It was successfully protected by the English forces. Now, Battle of St. Tom. The First Carnatic War is memorable with the Battle of St. Tom. This battle was fought between French forces and the Indian forces led by Anwar Dudin. Anwar Dudin was the Nawab of Carnatic. What was the reason behind the Battle of St. Tom between the French forces and Indian forces led by Anwar Dudin? During the course of besiege by Labardonios, the English sought help from Anwar Dudin. 
So Anwaruddin asked Dupuy to end the besiege of Madras, but Dupuy was not ready to accept the request made by Anwaruddin. It resulted the war between the Carnatic forces led by Anwaruddin and the French forces. Anwaruddin decided to teach a lesson to French force because his demand was not accepted by the French. What was his demand? To end the besiege of Madras. Anwaruddin sent an army against the French troops. In the name of Carnatic, he sent an army of ten thousand Indian soldiers under Mahfuz Khan to fight against the French army. Both the armies met at the battlefield of Senthom, located on the banks of River Adyar. The Indian forces consisted of ten thousand soldiers under Mahfuz Khan, sent by Anwaruddin, and the French army consisted of two hundred thirty Europeans and seven hundred Indian soldiers. It was a small army, but Anwaruddin's army was larger in number. So, who would come into victorious? It was the French. Even with a small army, the French was able to defeat Anwaruddin's force. What do you understand from this? A well-equipped army with modern weaponry would defeat a large Indian army. This was the lesson. Studied from the Battle of Senthom, Indian forces were defeated in this Battle of Senthom. The English, the French forces, was led by Faradays in this Battle of Senthom. He humbly de demonstrated to the fact that a well-disciplined army with modern weaponry. Good win over a large Indian forces. How did the first Carnatic War come to an end? As you have been told earlier, hostilities broke out in India between French and English following Austrian War of Succession in Europe. Austrian War of Succession. Came to an end in Europe with the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle. This treaty was ended in 1748. Under this Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle, Austrian War of Succession came to an end, following which the hostilities between English and French also came to an end. Under this treaty. The British got back Madras from the French. From the First Carnatic War, it became clear the French superiority had been displayed. The uh, English was not able to defeat the French. The French defeated not only the British but also the Indian forces led by. Anwaruddin. Dupuy, no doubt, demonstrated extraordinary skill and diplomacy. The English failed even to defend their stronghold in South India at Madras. They unsuccessfully carried out sea cum land operations against Pondicherry. So, from this first Carnatic War, the French superiority 
was displayed. One more thing from the first Carnatic war, the importance of naval power was recognized. Naval power was necessary to get success in wars and battles, especially in the conflict between English and the French. One another thing from this first Carnatic war was to keep in mind that had it not been quarreled between Labardonios, he was the governor general of Mauritius and the governor general of Indian settlement Duplay, the British would have faced complete disappearance from India if Labardonios and Duplay jointly fought against the British, they would have completely be removed from Indian soil. Now moving to Second Carnatic War, spanned between 1749 and 1754. As you have been told earlier, the First Carnatic War was the reflection of Austrian succession war in Europe. But the Second Carnatic War broke out not as a result of any hostilities between Britain and France in Europe. The reason behind the outbreak of the Second World War occurred in India. The reasons were occurred in India not as the reflection of hostilities between Britain and France in Europe. However, the Second Carnatic War was a life and death struggle for the survival of English and French companies. Now we are going to see the reasons behind the outbreak of the Second Carnatic War. Carnatic, it was a province under the Subedar of Dakkan, that is under the Nizam of Hyderabad. Carnatic was a small province under the control of Nizam of Hyderabad. The Carnatic was ruled by Nabab. Nabab was appointed and removed by the Nizam of Hyderabad since it formed the part of Nizam of Hyderabad. The headquarters of Carnatic was at Arcot. Since the Nizam of Hyderabad was busy fighting against the Marathas and other forces in North India, he did not have much time to look after the affairs of the Carnatic. So the Nawab of Carnatic more or less acted as an independent ruler. In 1740, before the first Carnatic War, the Marathas had invaded Carnatic and killed the then Nawab Dostali and his son-in-law Chanda Sahib was taken as the prisoner. This happened in 1740, that is even before the outbreak of the first Carnatic War. In 1743, the Nizam of Hyderabad appointed Anwaruddin as the Nawab of Carnatic. Since the Carnatic was the part of the Nizam of Hyderabad, that is why the Hyderabad Nizam appointed Nawab to the Carnatic. But in 1740, Chanda Sahib was taken prisoner by the Maratha. But in 1748, after seven years' captivity, Chanda Sahib was set free by the Marathas. He claimed Chanda Sahib, after release from captivity by the Marathas, demanded the Nawabship of Carnatic. Now, 
who was the current nawab of karnatic it was anwaruddin he had been acting as the nawab of karnatic since 1743 before which chanda sagi had been taken as prisoner by the marathas and in 1748 he was released by the marathas on release he climbed nawab ship of karnatic likewise in hyderabad as well the nizam ul mulk asafja he was the founder of hyderabad he died in 1748 he was succeeded by nasir jang but musaffar jang he was the grandson of nizam ul mulk he disputed the appointment of nasir jang as the nizam of hyderabad musaffar jang claimed that he was appointed as the rightful nizam by the mughal ruler the two disputes broke out during the same time one in karnatic and another one in hyderabad in hyderabad after the death of nizam ul mulk nasir jang became the nizam but it was disputed by musaffar jang likewise in karnatic anwaruddin who had been acting as the nawab of karnatic in 1748 chanda sahib on release from captivity by the marathas claimed that he would be the nawab of karnatic now naturally musaffar jang and chanda sahib joined together to get their respective seats in hyderabad and karnatic immediately these two disputes merged into one and in the following years a number of alliances and counter alliances were formed in quick succession it provided a golden opportunity to duplay to intervene the affairs of the indian states so duplay made secret treaties with chanda sahib to become the nawab of karnatic and musaffar jang to become the nizam of hyderabad in 1749 the combined armies of the french chanda sahib who was the claimant of the nawab ship of karnatic and musaffar jang he was the claimant of the nizam ship of hyderabad these three combined armies of french chanda sahib and musaffar jang killed anwaruddin who was anwaruddin he was the nawab of karnatic at the battle of ambere near vellore anwaruddin was died in this battle of ambere following with chanda sahib became the nawab of karnatic the son of anwaruddin muhammad ali muhammad ali was the son of anwaruddin he took shelter at trichinapalli in trichinapalli muhammad ali he was the son of anwaruddin took shelter now coming to hyderabad in 1750 nasir jang died while crushing his enemies in these two places the deputies of the french became the rulers musaffar jang became the subedar of dakkan for in karnatic the candidate of the or the supporters of the french 
चंदा सागे भी कई दी नवाब इन हैदराबाद फ्रेंच सपोर्टर मुसफर जंग भी कई दी नहीं जा इन दिस टू प्लेसेस इन कर्नाटक एंड इन हैदराबाद द फ्रेंच वाज एबल टू प्लेस देयर कैंडिडेट्स आज ए सपोर्ट रंडेड बाय द फ्रेंच ड्यूरिंग वन ऑफ द क्रिटिकल टाइम्स मुसफर जंग आम्बली रिवार्डेड ड्यूप्ले ड्यूप्ले वाज अपॉइंटेड एज द गवर्नर ऑफ all the mughal territories south of the river krishna for the support rendered by the french muzaffar jang granted governorship of all the mughal territory south of the river krishna to duple in addition to that he surrendered some districts in the northern circles to the french then masuli patanam well, it was one of the prominent trade centers it was also handed by muzaffar jang to french for the services rendered by the french for occupying the post of nizam at the request of subedar that is at the request of muzaffar jang a french army was also stationed at hyderabad under the captaincy of busi now the duple was at the height of his success he was able to place their own candidates in hyderabad as well as in karnataka in return the french got many privileges from Muzaffar Jung. Now, anti-climax for the French with the entry of the British. This time, in 1751, Sondrasti, new Madras governor, was appointed by the British. with the appointment of sounder as the new governor of madras the entire scenes began to change in 1751 sounder the new madras governor decided to help muhammad ali he had been in shelter in trichinapalli muhammad ali also received help not only from the madras governor sonder but also from the indian rulers of mysore tanchur and the marathas so with the support of indian rulers and the english forces the british was able to end the siege of trichinapalli where muhammad ali had taken shelter in this meantime robert clive he proposed a plan to divert the attention of chanda sahib what was his plan his plan was to send an army to the capital of karnatik arcot so naturally chanda sahib would divert a part of his army to our court to save his capital this was the plan conceived by robert clive robert clive felt that chanda sahib would divert his 
army for saving his capital or court. This plan was well conceived. Our court was successfully occupied by Robert Clive, the capital of Nava of Karnatic. With considerable ease, Robert Clive was able to capture our court in 1751. It was captured by a well equipped small English force consisting 200 European soldiers and 300 Indian soldiers. The card was well played as planned by Robert Clive. Chanda Sahib diverted 4,000 soldiers from Trichinapalli to Arcot to save his capital. But the army sent by Chanda Sagi was no match for the powerful English army. He was failed to defeat the English forces and to retake his capital Arcot. The English forces also got support from Indian forces of Raja of Tanjur. Mysore and the Marathas. So, Chanda Sahib had no option but to surrender before the British. Since he was not able to capture Arcot nor to defeat these English forces, he was killed by Chanda Sahib was killed by Raja of Tanchu. A strong English force under the leadership of Stringer Lawrence was able to relieve Trichina Palli in 1752 and Muhammad Ali was saved with the end of siege of Trichinapalli. The French force also surrendered before the English in 1752 at Trichinapalli. For both the forces of Chanda Sahib and the French got surrendered before the English. Now, the English had an upper hand. In the first Carnatic war, the French enjoyed upper hand while in the second Carnatic war the English was able to defeat the Indian forces led by Chanda Sahib as well as the French forces. French defeat sealed the fate of Duplay. Even though he had demonstrated extraordinary diplomacy and skill he was recalled by the French government because of heavy financial losses due to these wars, Second Carnatic War. Second Carnatic War caused heavy financial losses to French, following which the French government decided to call back Duplay. Duplay was recalled by the French government. He was replaced by Odegu as the new governor general of the French settlements in India. He was appointed in 1754. Odegu was appointed as the new governor general of the French possessions or settlements in India in 1754. Now coming to Treaty of Pondicherry. What was Treaty of Pondicherry? As you know, the first Carnatic war came to an end with the Treaty of aix la chapelle Likewise, the second Carnatic war came to an end with the signing of 
Treaty of Pondicherry in 1754. Under this treaty, the Second Carnatic War came to an end. However, in the Second Carnatic War, the English was able to defeat the French as well as the Indian forces led by Anwarduddin at Karnat, forces led by Chadda Sagi at Karnatic. The French influence was maintained intact at Hyderabad, where the diplomat turned commander Busi was stationed in this in Hyderabad, the French influence still remained intact. The French soldier diplomat Bussy had obtained further privileges from the new subedar of or the Isam of Hyderabad, Salabat Jung. Musafar Jung, he died in an accidental skirmishes in 1751. After the death of Musafar Jung, Musafar Jung came into power with the support of the French and Musafar Jung humbly rewarded Duplay. Even though the French was able to place their candidate in Hyderabad as in Aisam, Musafar Jung died in 1751. After the death of Musafar Jung, Salabat Jung became the next in Aisam of Hyderabad. From the new Nizam of Salabat Jung, more grants and privileges were obtained by Busi. The second Carnatic War was also inconclusive. The English was not able to completely root out the French. The French position in Hyderabad got further strengthened. Now the Third Carnatic War was conclusive. Out of one power emerged victorious. Out of these two powers, French and English, one power emerged victorious. Now let us see which power came out victorious. Third Carnatic War commenced in 1758 and it concluded in 1763. As you have been told earlier, the first Carnatic War broke out in India, consequence upon the Austrian War of Succession. In Europe, likewise, the Third Carnatic War was also an echo of the conflict between the English and French in Europe, this time it was seven years war. Following the outbreak of seven years war, in Europe, hostilities broke out between English and French in India as well. In 1757, the French government sent a powerful army under the commander of Count D. Daly. Even though he was sent in 1757, he reached India only after 12 months in 1758. In 1758, Count D. Daly reached India with a powerful army from France. Before the arrival of Count D. Daly with the powerful force, the British had defeated Siraj Daula in the famous Battle of Plassey and got immense wealth of Bengal under the leadership of Robert Clive. He masterminded the Battle of Plassey and conspired 
with the commander in chief of Sirajud Dawla and he was able to defeat Sirajud Dawla and got immense wealth of Bengal Count Dali once reached India captured Fort St David a small english establishment in 1758 the french faced financial difficulties so in order to find finance for his military operations count de dali then turned to the raja of tanchur for extracting 70 lakh rupees owing to the french company but he was not able to defeat the raja of tanchur nor able to get sufficient financial resources to meet the expenses incurred on finance military operations since he was not able to defeat raja of tanchur he then turned his attention to besiege madras the british stronghold but a strong powerful force was sent by the british from bengal so count de dali was also failed in his mission to besiege and capture madras then his attention was to summon lalli lalli summoned busi from hyderabad who was busi busi was a soldier diplomat stationed at hyderabad thereby the position of the french in hyderabad got strengthened but the summoning of busi from hyderabad was a himalayan blunder committed by count de dali otherwise the french power would be maintained intact at hyderabad but without looking into this lali immediately summoned busi from hyderabad the english sent forces from again from bengal to deccan these english concluded a treaty with the nizam salabat jang at hyderabad since busi was far away from hyderabad the french strength in hyderabad lost forever the nizam salabat jang with whom the english entered into a treaty thus with this the french influence in hyderabad came to an end forever now come to battle of wandi wash in the famous battle of wandi wash fought between english and french forces on 22nd january 1760 the english forces were led by general air cute the french forces was under count de dali air cute and dali count de dali he was the leader of french forces air cute he led english forces these two forces met at wandi wash on 22nd january 1760 the english forces led by sir air cute emerged victorious defeating the french forces led by count de dali 
Lally was taken as prisoner by the British. Soon the French lost their possessions in India in quick succession one by one. All the minor French possessions in the Carnatic were taken over by Arcute. He led English forces. Now the French left with only Pondicherry and the Jinji. Pondicherry was the center of the French establishments in India. But on 16 January 1761, the French lost Pondicherry as well. They were forced to surrender Pondicherry to the British. There another sender was at Mahi in on the, on the Malabar coast. Mahi was also surrendered to the British. The English and the French in Europe entered into a treaty. This treaty came to known as Treaty of Paris. Under this Treaty of Paris, entered into between home authorities in Europe, the other Carnatic War came to an end. What were the terms of this Treaty of Paris signed between France and Britain in 1763? Under this treaty, Pondicherry and some minor French settlements were returned to French. Minor settlements included Yanam, Mahi and Karikal. These places and Pondicherry. Pondicherry was the center of French settlements in India. These settlements were handed back to French. But under this treaty, no fortification of the French settlement was allowed. Now we are looking at the causes of the failure of the French. One of the main reason was that different types of government ruled Britain and France. In Britain, there existed enlightened oligarchy. Under this, Britain offered all support to the English East India Company. While on the other hand, France was under autocratic rule of Louis XIV. He was a leisure-seeking person. Even he mismanaged the affairs in France. In the above circumstance, how Louis XIV support a French company in India, naval superiority of the British was another reason. The British had at their disposal a powerful navy which could easily mobilize it in different parts of India. The British they established their settlements on the coast of Madras, Bombay and Calcutta. They could mobilize army at any parts of India easily. They controlled different parts of the country. In eastern India, they had Calcutta. Bombay was the base of their activities in western India, while in Madras, it was the center of their activities in South India. From these three different places, they could easily mobilize army in any part of the country. With Pondicherry at the base, even Napoleon could not defeat the country. Pondicherry was also financially poor. But a recall of Duplay, no doubt, 
Do you play demonstrated extraordinary skill? He was a white statesman and acted according to the needs of the time. And it was Duple who led the French in the First Carnatic War and emerged victorious. But the French government, without any foresight, recalled Duple on the pretext that he incurred financial losses, heavy financial losses. Now the type of these two companies, English East India Company was controlled by a court of 24 directors. They were annually elected by the general court of shareholders. They were not much controlled by the government. They acted quickly according to their own needs. The English East India Company by trade took much profits. These profits were sent from India to Britain through different channels. Then what about the condition of the French company? It acted as a mere government department. It was controlled by the government. It was not possible to take quick actions. Over and above, the company did not make no profit as well. The French always faced financial difficulty as you have been told, Lally attacked Raja of Tanchu for getting 70 lakh rupees in order to meet the financial requirements for the military operations against the British. The French company always faced financial difficulty. The organization, the organization of the French company was also very weak. It acted like a government organization under strict government control. While freedom, much freedom was granted to English East India Company, it quickly acted according to the circumstances and exigencies of time. Now the Battle of Plassey had an important role in, in this decisive Third Carnatic War. The Battle of Plassey which was waged between Siraj Daula and English forces. When on 23rd June 1757, just before the, just before an year of the Third Carnatic War, the English got political power in Bengal. Political power in Bengal. The British got political power in Bengal through the Battle of Plassey fought between Siraj Daula and the British. The British forces were led by none other than Robert Clive. With the Battle of Plassey, the English got immense wealth from Bengal. While on the other hand, Pondicherry was very poor. Now coming to the major questions from this topic, match the following. First Carnatic War, under which treaty the first one Carnatic War came to an end? Second Carnatic War, under which treaty the second Carnatic War came to an end? Under which treaty the third Carnatic War came to an end? Then the causes and the failure of the French in Carnatic Wars.
the Carnatic monks decided the fate of English. They were confined only to Pondicherry. What were the circumstances behind the Second Carnatic War? These are the questions to which you are now able to answer. Thank you dear students for watching my class. Thank you. My name is Gillette Sam and I teach sociology at uh, IIT Kanpur. Uh, one of the things you must have noticed uh, if you read or if you talk to people around you is that they often refer to uh, something called globalization or they often say we live in a global world. What does this mean? Uh, today I will tell you about how to think about globalization or interpret the word global in a sociological manner. When sociologists refer to globalization, they refer to three things. The first is that there are, uh, that it involves uh, transplanetary processes, which means that something is going on uh, across multiple borders, right? Uh, the second is that it involves heightened liquidity and uh, interconnected flows. Uh, now, by liquidity, and this is a term that uh, was coined by the sociologist uh, Zygmunt Bauman, uh, we refer to the increasing interconnectedness of things across the globe, but we also refer to uh, increasing instability across the world, which means that potentially something that is occurring many million, uh, okay, many kilometers away from you. Um, actually influences the place that you live in. So, if uh, there is uh, a natural disaster happening in one part of the world, maybe that causes uh, people to migrate from that area and they come and settle where you stay. So, that is what we mean by liquidity. And of course, when we are talking about liquidity, we are talking about things that are really moving from one place to the other. Now, the third aspect and this is something that uh, you may not conventionally come across in the way people use globalization, is that of structures. So, uh, let us take an example. Uh, supposing I as an Indian citizen wish to visit uh, a foreign country, let us say I want to go to South Africa. Can I just pick up my bags? and hop on the next plane and go to South Africa. Any logical person is going to say, no, wait, you need to have documents such as your passport or visa. Now, this passport or this visa is a representation of the larger structure that governs how people move across borders. So, we have things like border control, uh, national security agencies that uh, consider what kind of people are going to move from one place to the other, correct? So, uh, when we think about globalization, an average person typically tends to think about things moving or people moving from place to place. As sociologists, we also consider that there are structures that facilitate or direct this movement across multiple borders. 